Many times when we ask people what are the parental duties, they say to give good food for our children, good accommodation, good clothing, and give a safe up environment, and uh, always listen to them. So there are so many things, a list of activities which parents say these are the parental duties. But remember, to give a good food, we don't need parents. A good government is needed enough. To give good clothing, if there is a very good member of parliament or maybe very good government, they will be able to provide you benefits and many other things and good houses, good food, good uh, security, safety, all these things. For that, we don't need a parent. So many times, many parents have a misunderstanding. Their parental duty means give them food once in a while, or maybe every day, and give them uh, buy some good clothing once in a while. Take them for some outing or picnic or some make them some happy. Give them give them uh, iPad so that they will play the computer game 24 hours, so you will have no headache. So these are the main parental duties which many parents think about, but that is not true. That is not true. That is not what really God expect from you and me, from all of us. As a priest, what God expect me to do is not take them to uh, watch a football game or a movie, take all the people of the parish or the members who are under me, take them for a outing and picnic. For the all, for all these things, a priest is not needed. Anybody from the roadside, anyone whom anybody. Uh, anybody can take you for picnic or enjoyment, entertainment, watching movie or playing football or games or something. As a priest, my duty is different. What God expects me to give to the people who are interested to me is different. The same way, every parent, you have a duty which God wants you to do. That is not just giving them food and accommodation and safety or clothing, but something else. There is a beautiful passage in the Bible, Acts of the Apostle chapter 3 verse 2 onwards. Acts of the Apostle chapter 3 verse 2 onwards. And a man lame from birth. Let's repeat after me. A man and a man lame from birth. And a and man, man lame, lame from birth. Was being carried in. Was, was being, being carried, carried in. in. People would lay him daily at the gate of the temple. People, People would lay, lay him daily at the gate of the temple. temple. Called the beautiful gate. Called the beautiful so gate. So that, so that he could ask for alms. He could yeah. ask for alms. From those entering the temple. From those entering the temple. So this beggar, he wanted alms, food. I mean, food and uh, gold or silver or coins or some money so that he can survive. So that is what he was expecting and therefore he was waiting at the gate, beautiful gate and waiting for people to give some donations, some offerings, some alms. And then suddenly we read verse 3. When he saw Peter and John, when he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, about, about to go into the temple, he asked them for arms. He asked them for arms. When he saw Peter and John, they were coming to the temple and then he saw them and he looked at them. And then verse 4 we read Peter looked intently at him. Peter looked intently at him. As did John. As did John. And said. And said. Look at us. Look at us. So Peter and John, they looked at this beggar and said, look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. And then verse 5, 6, we read. And but Peter said, But Peter, Peter said, I have no silver or gold. I have no silver or gold. But what I have, but what I have, I give you. I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, Christ. Of Nazareth. Of Nazareth. Stand up and walk. Stand, Stand up, up and walk. walk. So Peter said, I have no silver or gold. Because he knows one thing. He has a special gift he has. All the other people have silver in their pocket. Gold in their pocket, coins in their pocket, maybe food in their pocket. They can give silver and gold. But they may not be able to give them Jesus. But Peter knows, I have Jesus, I will give. They have gold and silver, but let them give. But what I have, I will give. That is why God brought me here. And that is why he is looking at me. That is what he really needs. And I have to give it. And he gave them, he gave him. 
the powerful name of Jesus and in the name of Jesus and he asked him to stand up and walk immediately this crippled man got up and he took him by the right hand and raised him up and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong and he was healed my dear brothers and sisters the food and accommodation and the safety security all these things anybody in this country can give you if a good government is there they can give you but they cannot give one thing jesus they may not even give you jesus they don't even want you to recite the name of jesus but the lord wants every parent to know this first you should have the power of the name of jesus and you should give to your children even if you don't give anything to your children first thing that you should give to them is the name of jesus the powerful name of jesus the importance of the name of jesus the love of jesus the connection with jesus and then you will see the changes in your life your children will be totally different they will not be shaken in front of the crisis they will not be worried about the future they will not keep a hatred and anger and revenge against anyone they will love you they will love the others they will take care of the world and they will make this world beautiful if you give them jesus Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So my dear brothers and sisters, that is the most important parental duty. To have, first of all, you, have, you should have Jesus. And then you should give. That's why Peter said, what I have, I don't have silver and gold, but I know what I have. Jesus. And I will give you Jesus. Every parent should have Jesus. Therefore, you, only then you will be able to give your children Jesus. Jesus. I have seen many parents who are very prayerful connected to Jesus going to the church daily and regularly and praying daily in their family and such families they are able to produce good children and their children are very god fearing and loving and good children and god blesses them but if we don't have something if we don't have Jesus to give once in a while there are some people christians they go once in a while for some sunday mass the god is only for the sake of god they have god that's all no connection no love if you have 50 percentage of love of god your children will have only 20% 25 percentage if you have 90 percentage then you will have children with the 60 percentage of love of god at least so we should have maximum of the love and connection with jesus only then our children will have at least something praise the lord praise the lord thank you jesus thank you jesus praise you jesus praise you jesus listen and sisters when we have problems and sufferings and struggles and sicknesses and misunderstanding and confusions and uh, conflicts in our family and in our relationship especially when we have problems of our family members divisions and groupism and many other things in our own family there is a possibility that we may go into sorrow always sorrowful there are so many people always in sorrow because they are have they having sickness some people are always sorrowful because their husband is addicted to alcohol or drugs or something or gambling or something some people are always in sorrow because they have wife is not behaving properly or somebody in the family misunderstands them always remember this sorrow is also work of the devil of course when we have pain and sorrow we will have pain and sorrow for one or two days or through two three days but a long lasting sorrow always in sorrow is a work of the devil a christian is not supposed to be in sorrow of course we are all human beings and we have pain we have struggles and we will have sorrow but lasting sorrow is not from god one day one wife was complaining about the husband and she was saying father i'm i don't know I, there is not even a single day i don't cry every day i'm crying 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 because my husband is a terrible person and he said she said husband is addicted to alcohol drugs and creating problems shouting screaming bad words use bad words and she said i'm suffering father i'm struggling i can't accept this so then i asked 
I asked her, do you think your husband will go to heaven? She said, no way. Then I asked, what about you? I will go at least at the entrance of the heaven. At least to the entrance of heaven. Then I said, anyway, both of you are out of heaven. One is will not reach if they are close to heaven and you are at least only the entrance of the heaven, but not inside the heaven. The reason why you are still out, because you are in sorrow. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. You are looking at your husband and looking at his weakness and you are thinking there is no hope. There is no solution for this situation. Therefore, you are entering into eternal sorrow. That is a clear sign that you don't trust in Jesus. That is a clear sign that you don't see Jesus in your family. That is a clear sign you don't believe in Jesus. Then she said, Father, my husband is creating problem and he is a big problem and creating tension. It's a reality. I, I don't want to be in sorrow, but I have no choice, but I have to be in sorrow because he is behaving like this. My husband who is, in, who is behaving like this, he is a reality in my house. As long as he is there creating this problem in my house, I will have sorrow. Then we said, my dear daughter, it is true that your husband who is giving you headache and all these sorrowful things is a reality. He is there in your house. As long as he is there, you will have this problem because he is a reality. But remember, Jesus who is in your house is a greater reality than your husband. Why don't you see him? Why are you only looking at your husband? Why don't you see Jesus who is standing in your house is a greater reality. Though you don't see, he sees you. He is watching you. He knows you. He calls you by name and he says, you are mine. Why don't you see him? Why don't you see him? He is a greater reality than your husband. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's read this word of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 2, 3 onwards. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 3 onwards. Blessed be the God. Blessed be the God. And Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Father of mercies. The Father of mercies. And the God of all consolation. And the God of all consolation. See our God is the God of all consolation. God of any kind of consolation you need. He's there. He's a reality in your home. Verse 4 we read. Who consoles us. Who consoles us. In all our affliction. In all our affliction. My dear brothers and sisters. Our God consoles you in all your affliction. If you are looking at your husband. He will never console you. He will never console you. But still. Instead he will come and exploit whatever you have. And will go for drinking again. If you are always looking at your husband from whom you are expecting consolation or you are all look, always looking at your wife from whom you want consolation and support and love, it is in vain. It will be a tragedy. But God says, God who consoles us in all our affliction, get our consolation from Jesus and he is a reality in your home. He is real. He's alive. He comes to us in every Holy Eucharist so that we may be able to console those who are in any affliction with the consolation with which we ourselves are consoled by God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. When we receive this consolation from Jesus in our moments of affliction, then we will be strengthened and we will be able to console others. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Therefore, remember Jesus is a reality. Jesus is real. Jesus is there in your house. He is listening to you. He is watching over you. Psalm 34 verse 18. Let's read Psalm 34 verse 18. 
the lord is near to the broken hearted the lord is near to the broken hearted and he saves the crushed in spirit and he saves the crushed in spirit the lord is near the broken near to the broken hearted the lord is near to the broken hearted all the broken hearted people all those who are broken completely broken bent and hopeless remember this the lord is near to them the lord is near to you even though you don't see him he sees you and saves the crushed in spirit praise the lord praise the lord let's listen to this testimony 